Just a brief announcement. Some of you might be aware that we produce an IDE, and there we have a plugin that actually adds const to where it's applicable. And that's the most important thing to get. And if you actually care, you can configure it to refact reformat and refactor your code to either have east or west const. <laughs> I'm still east const, but you get the tooling for getting what you want. So the big red button. Um, reversing range 4. That's a standard definition of range 4, and fortunately it's defined in a way that we have lifetime extensions, so we can actually uh, iterate over a temporary on the right-hand side of the colon of the range 4, which is a good thing to have. But I started, okay, do a simple adapter for range 4, just calling R begin on begin and vice versa, R end on end. But temporaries, hmm. We need an R value reference overload, and we keep it as a reference in our adapter. But just having a reference to a temporary doesn't in an in a class doesn't extend it lifetime. So the trick that the standard does for the for statement is not working here. And if you do something like that with initializer lists, which are quite special. It is, doesn't even compile. So C++ 17 uh, class template argument deduction makes it uh, have, we can cheat the compiler and say, okay, if we get an initializer list, well, just uh, reverse uh, the initializer list and don't take it as uh, by, uh, by reference or by our value reference. Is that okay? Mm. Temporaries. Just consider we make an array and return it by value, with this, which is uh, happily happening with a std array. And then what you end up with, oh, we can return a temporary, wrap it in our reverse adapter, and we have very interesting code because we now keep a reference to a temporary that might not lo no longer be alive when we actually use it and call begin on that. How can you test that? Actually, I was able to use our great IDE to write a test case. And this, again, in test case of generic code, you write code you would never want to write in your real life. Um, so I actually count uh, constructions and deletions. And the assumption would be that within my reverse loop, I always have more constructing going on, then deletions happen, so I have some object left. It turns out, no, that's not the case. Why? Because while the loop is running, my temporary already is extinct, and I no longer have the objects I want to iterate over. Bad thing. Can we fix that? I could, I believe. I'm not sure. Tell me my bugs. So what I did is actually class template overload, deduction. CTAD. If I get a reference, I keep that reference because I'm sure it lives. If I get a temporary, I cheat because I instantiate my reversed adapter. Note the spelling, something about that. And keep the container by value by moving it in, which is good. I keep it now. I own it. So while the for loop Range 4 extends the lifetime of the reversed temporary object, and because it holds the uh, container by value, or it will live until the end of the for loop, even if it comes from a temporary. And again, the special treatment of the initializer list. Now to the bonus slide. So I have a begin bonus with the cons and the bonus slide with the thing. Calling begin on temporary containers is very bad, so I might write a proposal on actually banning begin on temporaries by deleting the corresponding overloading begin for uh, having it ref qualified and overloading the R value ref qualified things with the deleted uh, version so it wouldn't actually be callable. 
And uh, we try to figure out over dinner if that will break existing code. And I'm, if anybody from Google is here, please crawl your code base and figure out if it would break existing code. <laughs> there are the ideas that I was told are bad by overloading the index operator also are, uh, are value qualified. <laughs> and that's good. Thank you for